did you ever see a piece of code that uses primitive data types in its public API? I'm sure you have, because most code is written like that. But this can cause problems. Today, I want to talk about a code smell called primitive obsession. And I want to show you how code can often become easier to understand and nicer by eliminating primitive data types, especially, but not only, from its public API. My name is David and in this video series, I'm trying to show you things you can do to become a better software developer. I'm working as a freelance consultant and coach and in the last 12 years I've tried to constantly improve my skills as a software developer and architect, but also as a tester and team coach and trainer. And in those 12 years, I have learned that having a high internal quality, that does, having a good software quality is crucial for delivering better software, faster and cheaper. Low internal quality can slow you down and cost you a lot of money and in many different ways. So bad design will cost you a lot and in many different ways. And today I want to talk about a very specific design smell called primitive obsession. You can notice primitive obsession when your code uses primitive data types like integers or booleans, but also strings and dates and other built in types a lot, especially in its public API. Primitive obsession is a more general version of stringly typed code, a code smell, where your code uses strings in places where other data types would be more appropriate. So what is primitive obsession and how does it look like? Consider the following piece of code. This code comes from a hypothetical software that allows me to pay my taxes in Austria. Users would first input their tax account number. The software would verify that this tax account number is correct, doing some checksum stuff or other verification, then load information about the tax office and display that to the user. And because right now the software only supports Austrian tax account numbers, it can load the tax office information using the first two digits of the tax account number the tax office ID. The tax account number looks like this. The first two digits are the tax office number. In this case, 46 means Linz. The next six digits, usually written with a slash in the middle, are the account number within this tax office. And the last digit is a checksum. The example code gets the tax account number that was entered by the user, validates it, maybe checks the checksum or does some other validation, and then extracts the tax office number. It tries to load the tax office, and if everything worked correctly, it will display this information to the user. If not, it will output an error message. For some reason, maybe a performance optimization or because it is required by some backend, the tax office number is also converted to an integer. If you think right now nobody would ever do that, I have seen very similar things at multiple past clients. Maybe a little bit less obvious stuff and with other things than tax office numbers, but sometimes code like this exists. The code uses primitive data types, strings and integers, all over the place. Validate tax account number returns the error message as a string. The tax account number is a string. We extract the tax office number as a string and convert it to an integer. And even the name of the tax office is returned as a string by taxoffice.getName. But the code is reasonably short and easy to understand. So where is the problem? First, these data types are too general. They allow more operations than should ever be possible. Like integers 
allow us to add, subtract, and so on, and also to compare to other integers, whether they are greater, smaller, or equal. And all of that should never be possible with tax office numbers. On the tax account number, we can also do operations that should not be possible. We can use the string manipulation functions, or a search inside, or create the substring, and all of that should never be possible with tax account numbers. And if, again, you think right now nobody would ever do that, think again. Second, the use of data types here does not help us to add clarity or avoid duplication. It's even the other way around. To add functionality around tax account numbers, we needed a class called tax account number util. And this class also knows about the structure of tax account numbers. Now we have two places in our system that know about this structure. We have duplicated the knowledge about tax accounts. And third, you are voluntarily giving up compile time safety. Suppose there's a method called like this, pay taxes to, and then a lot of parameters, all of them primitive data types. When you have a call like this, nothing is stopping a programmer from supplying the parameters in the wrong order. When somebody to decides to reorder the arguments or to add another argument, it will be really hard to find all the affected places and to make sure that the reordering was done correctly. The compiler could help you with that. The compiler could prevent defects like that. But in this case, it cannot because you're using primitive data types. So how can I improve this code? As a first step, I will do the most simple change that I can imagine. I will introduce types for tax account number, tax office ID, and tax office name. And there was already a class for tax office. And those new classes only wrap the primitive data types. They, at first, do nothing in addition. Even though this is just an intermediate step, I already made some progress. The method from string on tax account number should never return an invalid value, so I had to move the validation code there. This is what J.B. Reinsberger calls attractive code. Once you have a place for a certain concept, this place will attract other code, so it is attractive. This method from string can still use the tax account number util for validation. So I just moved the code there. But later I will even inline this validation code and remove the tax account number util. Another win, we should not have util classes anyway. And if you do not like the exception being thrown here, there would be other solutions. But that would be too much change for this video. All right, so I now have classes for tax account number and tax office ID. And so far, they only wrap the primitive data types. They do not even do anything. But they already give me two more advantages. I can make the constructor private, forcing everyone to use factory methods. And there I can do very specialized validation depending on which factory method was called. Also by using static factory methods, I can give the constructor a name, like the name of the factory method. And named constructors would otherwise be impossible in Java. And second, I can make the wrapped primitive final. So now those types are immutable and they start to resemble what domain driven design calls a value object. Now I have my attractive code, what else could I do with it? For now I will just do a little bit more cleanup. I will remove the redundant calls to from string and as formatted string and move that code to the specialized types. Now 
the main method here is becoming a little bit more clean. And also, since I have a type for tax office name, I do not have to name the method for showing it show tax office name. I could, for example, just name it show name of and then supply a tax office name and rely on the compiler to select the right method for me. The code in this method is now shorter and easier to read. And it has added compile time safety. It is now impossible to supply the wrong number to find by or to call the wrong method for showing the name. And the compiler even forces me to deal with the validation error that I could have ignored in the first version of the code. Yes, I wrote a lot of code around this method. That maybe took me half an hour. But this code was easy to write. And it allows me to encapsulate the data better. It also allows me to make the wrapped data types final and to make all these classes immutable, which makes writing correct code easier and will prevent bugs in the future. The code also added clarity to on tax account number changed the main method I was refactoring. This will be the first method a, late, a programmer will see later when they debug a problem or want to add functionality. So if I can save the next programmer, which might be future me, a few minutes of debugging time, or if I can prevent a simple parameter ordering mistake, saving another programmer a few minutes of time, this change was already worth it. Have you ever seen code with primitive obsession? What about the software you are working on right now? What are the best and worst places regarding to this? And did it ever cause a problem in the past, a small or large? Or are you already creating specialized data types like in my last example? How does that feel and what advantages does it give you? Or are there any disadvantages? Tell me in the comments or shoot me a tweet to add the answer. And subscribe to this channel and if you liked this video, please share it with your friends, followers and colleagues.